Emmanuel, you cannot even believe it. How right on you are. And by raising that question about education, it means you are thinking. You are thinking. And that's exactly the reason why, that's exactly the reason why this, Pakazi why to die, sure. This is the, exactly the reason why uh, a crown, yeah? So we have to build a base at the specific base. We have to build a base. We have to build a base. We have to build a base. So, um, the question you ask about education is right spot on. That's exactly what I'm, why I'm doing this HMT on question. Because education is supposed to give you two things. Not all the things you have, all those things you have mentioned now, they are, good. they are just and everywhere has been uh, benefits so it's just, of education. Uh, but the basic the thing that has been resolved and everything has come down. The ability to spread. Yeah, it's a, that misconception is misconception. Thing. Question you know, of so we, are, we are resolving it. So we once you don't have that in our educational system, it doesn't matter how many, even well, the old school thing is part of the misconception and in politics, number two, politics, because... quality of a basis to be able to determine who is educated, the ability to reason and function by the principle of cause and effect. Those are the two basic criteria, parameter for edu education, for educated person. The ability to always do everything through the, uh, through the understanding of cause and effect. So there is a reason for why you do everything, and there is a reason why, a reason why everything is done, and there will always be effect or consequences to everything. Okay, for example, let's say, let's take this second one, cause and effect. If these people that are here, are, so, that we are looking at now, who are fighting, are supposed to think about consequences, foresight, effect, that is effect. Effect is foresight. Effect is consequences. You know that anything I do now will have consequence. We are not being trained to live like that. If those people, footballers, I mean the people who are rejoicing after football, what is the consequence? What is, this joy that I'm expressing right now, what is the result? What is it going to give me? Cause and effect. What is the purpose of it? What will I gain from it? What will it end? It will end me broken by, I've lost $10,000 a job, in my job. We have not been taught to reason like that. So a society that doesn't function by cause and effect and questioning, it will function by the alternative. And what is the alternative? The alternative is sentiments and emotions, which is instinct and stimulations, reflexes. That's why when they kill somebody in Nigeria or something happens somewhere, what you see is not cause and effect. It's not questioning. It's not questioning what happened. How can we? It's not questioning. You know what you see? Ah! 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 We have to fight. We have to do this. Sentiment, stimulation, reflexes. So you see, you see the way it is done. So it doesn't matter what school you finish. If you are inherently uneducated or uninformed about the content of your being as a human being, that a human, you are only human when you function by these things. By reasoning or questioning on cause and effect, that's only the time you are a human. Otherwise, you'll be living an animalistic lifestyle without even knowing it. By, and wh wh when are you animalistic? When you live by instinct, reflexes, and stimulation. So our own culture right now is the animalistic biomasses culture. We have not been educated. We have not been programmed. To now function like human by questioning, reasoning, and cause and effect. Yeah. We have we a whole nation. That's why I said, if God will ever allow me to go into politics, that is what it's going to be about. It's going to be about 
changing the whole thinking pattern of a whole nation. To begin to think and live by reasoning and questioning. And that's why this whole HMT is about. In case you want to say something? Oh, no, oh. Okay. I was saying because uh, wouldn't, wouldn't that go for like schools of thought in a sense? So if, like, for example, you were saying that people needed to be educated and needed to be aware of what they're like um, having thought like with the education and stuff. I was thinking to myself, wouldn't that go across like with philosophies? Like when you were talking about how um, uh, Nigerians are fr like they're frugal, with, not frugal, but they they sp they're wasteful. Yeah, they, wasteful. You see, they're very wasteful. So if you think about it, it's more to the sense of like trying to how can I put this? It's like ah, um, um, oh, I love I forgot what I thought. But what I was trying to say was is that if that was the case, uh, shouldn't there be like principles instead of telling kids to go to uh, at, like it goes with like poverty and stuff like that? Let me mm -hmm. there we go, there we go. So what I'm trying to say is, is that. You know how in Nigeria, not every like um, I was speaking to Chris here earlier on. Like obviously earlier on, it's more about trying to get money for uh, um, to like raise your family, to think about your family and stuff like that. And money is more the uh, kind of like the dri one of your driving goals in life to kind of aspire to. But if your school of thought is to think about how can you as a person maybe create something for yourself, beautiful, stuff like, that, like beautiful, it's more, it's more to do with like the school of thought and all that. Beautiful. Like, that's, I think that's what should be. More, beautiful. That should be what's more like. That, yes. Yeah, that's what we, that should be what philosophy of life. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we will be right there. Eh? Beautiful. So because money also is stimulation. So instead of emphasizing money, which is a stimulation, we should be emphasizing values, which is philosophy of life. And the philosophy of life of the whole nation, or any nation, any society that is advanced and developed, must be based on questioning and reasoning. Reasoning must inform every action and cause and effect, which is why. Purpose. There must be a purpose for everything you are doing. And you also know, must know that there's an outcome to it. Yes. Put your hand. Um, um, doctor, um, on the education issue, which one is more beneficial? Should we go for formal education or, in, or yeah. informal education? Which, informal. which one is self education is the most for that one? Only self education. School education will only give you paper to get a job, but formal education will make you who you want to be. Yeah, um, I just wanted to um, kind of like on the back of what he said when he was talking about education. I think in, in Nigeria, we've confused what education actually oh, means okay. and that's the problem we have like you said education is meant to bring about enlightenment you might go through school but you might not be enlightened and uh, there's a name we call people like this that act this way we call them educated illiterates meaning they've gone through the four words of school but they yeah, are not illiterate. they are still very <laughs> illiterate and i think the culture we've been talking about in churches where we said uh, we have this culture whereby you don't question your elders. Mm -hmm. We bring that also into schools. You discover that even in universities, you ask your if lecturer. If you don't question either in university or in the family, you are not educated. Yeah. We should get that right. So if they are teaching us not to question anything in the school, then it's not educational centers. Yeah. So I, I believe, like when you said there's no church in Nigeria, I still think that there is no education. There's no, there's no school in Nigeria. Why, why? Because I say, you ask your lecturer a question, and to him it's like you are challenging his authority. Who are you to ask that question? And you dare not even challenge what he says because he feels that, after all, I'm the one standing here. You are the one listening. Who are you to tell me <laughs> <laughs> what to do? So at the end of the day, and we the discover church is the same thing. The, the same family thing. is the same, the same thing. thing. It's the same thing. It's a, it's a cultural so formation. So you, know, you now understand that in our families, what should be introduced is questioning and cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Reasoning and questioning the same way. Questioning, reasoning, and in our schools, questioning, reasoning, and uh, you know the the education has been defined, like you said, as enlightenment, as bringing enlightenment. But I don't, I want to go away from that because people think that they are enlightened because you know they speak English, or mm -hmm. they are enlightened mm -hmm. because they travel abroad, 
or they are enlightened because they dress well. Mm -hmm. But I would like to say education, I go to the nitty gritty of it. Education is when you have been, you know, you have the understanding to question, to reason and question it. If you don't, re if you cannot reason and question, I don't care for enlightenment. Forget about that. Yeah. That's it, man. Questioning and reasoning, and awareness that everything is defined by cause and effect. Believe me, that's the yeah. purpose of education. That's what the essence of education is supposed to be. Anyhow, so if you are not doing every action by, there must be a purpose and a reason for what I'm, why I'm doing everything, and there must be a consequence or result for it. Cause, cause and effect then you are not educated. There is no reasoning and questioning everything. Why My mom told me this. I will not just do it because my mom said it. Why? My dad told me this. I will not just do it because my dad said it. Why? Give me the reason. I am not an animal. My pastor told me this. I said, I don't care if you are pastor or you are bishop or you are president. Give me the reason why. Yeah. In case you want to say something. to go on as well like i think from both parents and both the child yeah it gets to a Most point, your respect it gets to a point it gets to a point where elders nowadays or well, well, well like when it comes to respect they obviously you got to respect your elders but they forget that they were also once kids they're supposed to respect, they, respect they, the kids too you know, they were supposed to you have to like kind of like question it, like even i that to this day i, I question my parents yes you but, should but it's what to the degree that you should understand that i'm asking it to like for knowledge well, of to, course to build up if you are not questioning then you are going to become a robot yeah. you're going to become a robot and if they, if they succeed in making you a robot, they think they have won, but they will lose you. Yeah, thank you. You want to say something? Okay. All right, let's go back to the notes. Let's go back to the note now. So you see why I have to, you know, why I, I, I was very discouraged when I came this morning that, you people don't want to talk about worldviews. You don't. Are you? Do you still don't want to talk about worldviews? You still don't want to talk about worldviews. You mean I should still forget about these two topics? Now I'm not hearing you guys now. You think we should do this this topic anyway? Do we still do this? Should we still do it? <laughs> what What does scripture? Because you brought my mind back to this question. When you just uh, mentioned the word view again, what does scripture mean by saying that we are in the world, but we are not of the world, that we're strangers in this world? Well, uh, that's going to be that's going to be a little bit different from what we're addressing right no, now. The word, we're talking about word view. Yeah. Now, what that what that means basically, based on the word we is that when we come to the Lord. The Bible says that we should renew our mind by the you know, knowledge of Christ and you know his kingdom. So not being of this world means that I am living by a set of rules and value system that is dictated from the kingdom of God. So uh, not being of this world means even though I'm here physically, but I'm having higher set of rules. I have school of philosophy, you know, philosophy of life. That I, the higher understanding that makes me to live in, with you know a different lifestyle than the rest of the world around me. Not just because I'm Christian or I'm religious or I'm going to church because I have the no no no. It's because I belong to a kingdom. I'm a citizen of another kingdom, and that that kingdom that I belong to, the kingdom of God, has higher set of rules, higher value systems. So it is those principles that I'm talking about right now. It is those value systems that now inform the way I behave. But the other people who are in the world, they are being informed by these trivial cultures and by what is going on around them, by what they have seen. Yeah, by the affairs of the world and by the dictates of the spirits under the heavens. So that, that is no problem. So let's go back to the note. Okay, so Lord Lugard's analysis of uh, Nigeria and Africa. Now, uh, Lord Lugard, like I said, is someone that knows a little bit about Nigeria um, because he's, he knows Nigerians. He, he has studied Nigeria and 
you know, how we do things and who we are. So he says, the Nigerian Africans, Nigeria, in character and temperament, the typical African of this race type is a happy, thriftless, that is prodigal, spending, lavicious, excitable person. Lacking in self-control, we just discovered, told you what self-control is, and that is, if he says we are lacking in that, and self-control is the ability to be able to inflict on yourself a measure of uh, restraint and boundary on your own self. And I think the guy is right. We don't like that. When I first came to Europe and I discovered that everywhere you have to wait. I, I, where I'm coming from, you don't wait. And even if there is a line, everybody is waiting. You have to bypass it. Ah, that is the way you think you are the one who is smartest. But that's that lack of self-control. And I didn't like the self-control that the whole creation, I thought I was in prison when I first came to Europe. You go to, if, all, all, all Nigerians have felt like that. You have to drive, you have to wait. I'm, no car is coming now. How can I wait? But there is red, it's red. Hey, it's red, but no car is coming now. <laughs> they say it's yellow, you have to pass. But why should I wait? Nobody is around, wait. See, I, it doesn't make sense. That is... <laughs> That is our own lack of self-control thing. We don't just we don't just put yourself under control when no, nothing is at stake, and we are not going to be punished for it. Why should you put yourself under control? So we lack that self-control. Then lack of discipline. What is discipline? That you are being guided constantly by the need to achieve a goal, and because of that, you are putting yourself under pain, under duress, under restraint, under some you know. You are going through some restraint and some self-inflicted pain just because you want to go through, you want to get to some goal. And then uh, lack of uh, foresight. And foresight is what we just talked about. No, no understanding of that is when your future informs your actions for today. When you are always considering the future, when you are always considering the consequences, the, the re, you know, what you are seeing over there and you are allowing that to inform your action today. And that is what Nigeria is. Then it says, these Africans, Nigerians, they are naturally courageous. Is that true? Of course, Nigerians. Are they not naturally courageous? But that is the problem. Because we don't put reason yeah. <laughs> to that courageousness. We are just, you know, blatant and, uh, you know, naturally courageous, but you have to put reason for it. That courageousness has to be informed by reason. That courageousness will just be dying anyhow. That courageousness has to be informed by goal, by cause and effect, and by reasoning and questioning. We don't just need you to be courageous because you want you can be courageous. There must be a reason for it. So naturally courage, courageous and naturally cautious. I got sir. I got sir. <laughs> Good man, sir. Good man, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know? Okay, what is that giving? What is that? Just for people to think that you are well brought up. You are well, you know. You know, when I went to Nigeria, I was saying, okay, by, please go and clean that place, okay? In the next four months, I'll be, I'll be back. I came back. I said, I got sir. He said, okay, I, I'm back. Because, so because I'm back, they're trying to say, account, sir, that means welcome back or something. You know, welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. I said, okay, I'm back. Then I said, ah, but I told you people to do this thing since morning. Why didn't you do it? Ah, yes, sir. Uh, this one went there. Uh, I didn't know. I was doing this. Sir. I said, ah, so what, why are you doing it? Account, sir. Account, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't need your yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or account, sir. Account, sir. Go and do what I told you to do. If you have done that, that would have been more of a blessing to me than a cancer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why are you hugging me? Don't hug me. Don't touch me here. If you cannot do what I told you to do, why? <laughs> I don't need you to be nice. Don't try to be nice here. Do things what you told you to do. I don't know if you... <laughs> so that being... Culture, that being cultured and you know being you know being nice, 
Nobody needs it. If it's not connected to effectiveness, it has to be connected to cause and effect again. Life is guided by cause and effect. But in our own culture, they are not told that life is guided by cause and effect. That, you know, everything, there must be a reason to it. So why should I be, you know, making, you are trying to make me happy, you know, trying to say, by just buying down and say, good morning, I'm okay, I'm there, yes, sir, I'm here. I don't need yes, sir, I need the work to be done, okay? I don't need yes, sir, I need the work to be done, okay? You know, because this house, I said, oh, but you didn't tell me. I don't need to tell you. You need to open your eyes, my dear. You need to open your eyes. I didn't tell you to tell me, yes, sir. But you saw that something is out of, out of order here. You cannot go and fix it. Well, I didn't know. Why? Use your brain to know. Use your brain. That's why you have a head. But how, how did you know that you have to say, yes, sir? Because that's what they have been told all their life. Just go and be cautious. Yes, sir. 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 <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome, sir. Who needs all that rubbish? I need to you show me your product. Now, is there a place for cautiousness? Is there a place for culture? Is there a place for, for well, you know, well manneredness? Yes. But you know, don't want to emphasize it at the expense of productivity. Don't be a slave. Subservience. Everybody is a slave to, 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 to be subservient. I don't need it. Go and perform something. Let me respect you for something. Let me respect you for your product, for your service, for your productivity, for your mind. Not to, just because you are saying I'm cultured. That is low level. So they are nationally courageous. And naturally cautious that is respectful and polite. Who needs that? You know, it's good, but minimal. I need your productivity. Then, so that's one thing. Then let's go to another group of things. This group of people, these Africans, they are full of personal vanity. That's another problem. What is personal vanity? Personal vanity is when a person overemphasizes his own glory, or his own gain, or his own profit. When you over pay too much emphasis on wearing gold and chains, do you have you seen those Americans, those black Americans in America? They go and put some big chain in the neck. That is what is called personal vanity. Or they go and put some coat over there, flowing there, and you know, you know, you know those, those black people doing the that is called personal vanity. Or you know, or so, you know. When you overemphasize your personal relevance, your personal significance, your personal importance, when you to, you cele over celebrate your own importance, your own achievement. Let me go. Let me go and check it out in the dictionary. Let's say what is personal vanity. I I think I guess I'm right, but let's say personal vanity. <laughs> no, no, that's different. <laughs> No, narcissism is different, totally different from personal vanity. Personal vanity is just personal glory. Excess, excessive. Uh -huh. You see? Is that, like, is that what I was talking about? He says excessive pride in one's. Yeah, in one's everything. Excessive pride. Excessive pride in one's uh, appearance, in one's qualities, in one's abilities, in one's achievements. Is that not Nigeria for you? Excessive pride in everything. In one's ability, in one's character, in one's quality. Being vain. Being glorious. That's exactly it. Excessive pride in one's appearance, qualities, abilities. That's why they want to build flashy, flashy everything. Do you, have you seen Nigerian women dress before? Flashy, flashy everything. Why? Because it's personal glory, personal vanity. We, we thrive in that. And the whole reason why they want to walk, go out is because of personal glory. Their appearance, their ashwaibi, their even those spraying of money is because of personal glory. It's because of personal vanity. 
All those praying of money is all because of personal vanity. Even they might not even have that money. They've not made the money. Ah, the mommy they are burying. They didn't, they didn't give that money to the mother when she, she was alive. But when she died, they now, because of personal vanity, they want to spend that money on the burial. Personal vanity is everywhere. I don't know if any one of you would like to talk about personal vanity. How do you see that in Nigeria? I think that's also why um, this... Sorry, the dictionary uh, definition of personal vanity is excessive pride, excessive glory in one's appearance, excessive pride in one's qualities, in one's character, in one's abilities, in one's achievements, even in one's achievements and results. Excessive pride, excessive glory. Just like we saw with the ball. Excessive. That is personal vanity. It's a national vanity now. Excessive. They, have, they scored a goal. Yeah, we scored a goal. We won a match. But excessive pride and excessive glory is personal vanity. It's a, it's a device. It's not a quality. It's a vice. It's a national vice. Yes, it's quite unfortunate because this is the, where the whole um, church structure in Africa right now is. is wow, is, even this church. Is what, yes, that this is, is what true. it's built about. And that is why Brandon is a big name right now in um, African Christianity. Because everything has to be big. Yeah, there is a church in, in Abuja. They in call Abuja, something. What they Oza, call it? Oh. Oza. Ko Koza. Koza, yeah. yeah. Exactly. It is a church that is yeah. built yeah. all around personal vanity. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think this one word. There is another one in Lagos. They call to Paul a different That's what the personal vanity of how I can speak like American. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> personal so, vanity in accent. I can yeah. preach like this. I can talk. I can be eloquent. Yes. Personal vanity. Suit, clothing. Yes. In my accent in clothing. Convoy, like when pastors wow. come, so convoy too. Convoy, right? yes, convoy, <laughs> protocol, and all these things like that. Are we not in trouble? Even church. Yes, this is the even in church building. I think absolutely, even in building a church because you have to do one university, second yeah, university, first, yes. one plane, second yeah. plane. Yeah. And the way we even design <laughs> the church auditorium itself, the way we want, you know, because it's all about competition and all of those things. Personal so, vanity. Vanity. So like, all of these things are... And these are the things that Bible preaches against. So, But now the church is now the one that is now blowing it out of proportion. Even when Bible says it's vanity upon vanity. Even when they are designing their websites, they have to visit like, can, like three or four websites just to copy what is in there because they want to do better than... Other people. Or you no, know, somebody even told me that in every page of the website you have to have the pastor there. In every story you have to refer to the pastor. In every testimony you have to refer to the pastor. <laughs> Anybody that comes to the stage have to start by saying my my father in the Lord or something or you know, something like that. Just to say something about the pastor. Personal vanity. That is two hundred years ago this thing was written though. It's still the same thing today. I, I could um, vividly remember when I was... Now, talk my, I don't think you are bashing Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because Nigerians who are just coming fresh from Nigeria, they say, ah, no, we are not as bad. One time when I was talking like that, that's what he was saying. A pastor, we are not as bad now. Well... Well... <laughs> 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 are you here now? <laughs> but he is typical. And I want him to oppose us. And I want us to, to question. I used to think like that. You used to think like that too. I just came to Europe. Okay. He so just came. Ah. <laughs> That's exactly what people in Nigeria think normally, the normal people, that we are not as bad now. And I could sense it, I could pick it up in him as I was sitting here. That That's exactly what's going on in his eye. So I wanted him to give him freedom to express. <laughs> You think you are not as bad, eh? Is that what you are saying to me? <laughs> <laughs> bad, 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 and bad. <laughs> <laughs> Your own is the opposite. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> 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 
honestly, my uh, my brother here, you made a very good point. I I, I could vividly remember when I was um a worker in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, um Pastor Obey, I do it. And I was like, why do I have to be wearing suit every day? <laughs> because I'm, I'm a worker. Yeah. <laughs> and they, 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 there's a particular, a specific dress code. And I was like, ah. okay, that's what they call branding now, or yeah, protocol. Yeah, yeah, said, because yeah, said of the branding. protocol. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? I want to be casual. And then I, I got to church that day, and um, um, Uludu's PA was like, uh, you, you're not going to work today. Wow. Yeah. No, and, it's not possible. And and, and, and and it was like, why, why are you wearing? <laughs> and it was like, you're not in the proper dress code. I, then I was like, what what dress code? He said, like, well, can't you see what you're wearing? I said, eh, okay, no problem. So, vanity. Vanity. Vanity upon vanity. <laughs> you know, I, I, can, I can relate with him. Because we have seen only, the whole country is synonymous to vanity. Yeah. I can re relate with him because while I was in Winners, um, it got to a point I became part of the what they call altar steward. So people who like go to the altar, you pray, you give testimony and all that stuff. So I normally come from work on a Wednesday to go to church. And we had a meeting one Saturday, I think one Saturday, and the pastor was insisting that when you're coming to the altar, you need to put on suit. You know? So I asked the question. I said, sir, you cannot go to altar without yeah. suit. Ah, <laughs> waiting, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> I'm so, sorry, <laughs> waiting. Yeah. So I asked the question. I said, "Is it? Is it? Comp is it? Comp because I didn't know." I said, "Is it compulsory? Is it a must?" He said, ah, "Yeah, you have to." And I said, "But I don't go to. I don't go to the office with uh, with suit." I said, "The the the place I work in is dressed down Monday ah, to Friday, you. dressed down. So sometimes I go to the office with jeans, with slippers, and all that." I said, and I'm coming back from the office. So should I okay. be taking suits to the office just because I need to serve or I need to? And they were like, um, because I want to go to bed. <laughs> so because of that, I just kind of like started withdrawing from because I just wanted to be myself. I don't want to be like you know, understand stuff. So I just started withdrawing, withdrawing, and gradually I just pulled out from the old frivolity water, because to whatever. So you know, frivolousness, frivolity is being glorified. It's yeah. being put as a culture. And that's what I'm saying. If I, God will uh, permit me to be able to have a say on Nigeria, these are my focus. We need to change our own value system, our own philosophy of life, our own concept, understanding. We need to recondition our people from animalistic understanding of life to, you know, values uh, but this... and virtues. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, this of personal vanity has been termed or has been presented to us in another form. Okay. So it's not being seen as personal vanity okay. as we discuss. We understand now that some of these things we are doing the personal vanity. For example, one of the terms for this personal vanity is black excellence. What? Black excellence. What is? I never heard that before. <laughs> yeah. I've heard it for the first time. Yeah. What because was that? see, some of the things, some of black, black excellence. Black. Black, yeah, yeah, black excellence of the black man. I never had it though. Some of the trends that we are we are seeing in African church now is being copied from American black church, for example. Eh. Yes, for example, he made mention of Koza. He made mention of Koza, for example. Uh, Koza actually pattern or fashion is church according to TDJs, and similar to TDJ and Clefo Dollars and. So that is they, vanity they, they, they now. Give this it's the spirit of the world. Black excellence. Nothing so, like that. Can you find that in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not there. It is vanity. It is packaging vanity. It is packaging wordlessness, covetousness, worldliness. It is packaging. Mm, what do you say? You know, yeah, it is. It is trying to package. Uh, trying to package the word lifestyle. You know, the Bible rather said the lust of the eye, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It is pride of life they are calling black excellence. It's the pride of life that is being packaged. I think it was uh, success who first raised up his hand. Uh, I just wanted to um, mention that 
another group of people that are very um, guilty of this will be guys from Congo Brazzaville. Ah, Congo Brazzaville, <laughs> they overtake Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Congo Brazzaville, that one, I think they overtake Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. They, 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 because they, 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 they people. Uh, but, but yeah. even in Nigeria now, what has now made that frivolous lifestyle, frivolous lifestyle, to be even more, uh, you know, pronounced, are the entertainment. Those Davido. Yeah. What do they call them? Uh, whiskey. 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 Yes. Those are the worst. Those are some of the worst cultural change. Yeah, all those people, they are the people bringing, destroying our value system. You know, they, all those people are the worst of the, it's just like going to America. If you go to America, for example, I used to go to America a lot. They used to have black entertainment, black television, BET, yeah. So that is what is now redefining the culture of the uh, black American people. You know, but that is the least. How can you take the, uh, what do you call it? These are the least form of, they are low, what, what do I call it? I have a message, I call low, low, uh, these are low, no, yeah, 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 they are the low activities, they are activities that are, they are not the eye level. Okay, for example, to dress nice. Is it okay? It's good. But they are low, low, no. Okay, for example, you could dress like this. You look, you look cool. Come. Okay, to dress like this and wear a big chain. Is that cool? Cool. Glasses, cool. But they are low yielding, yes. Low yielding enterprises. It's good to look nice and cute, but if you use two thousand dollars to dress up like this, it's so low. You, low you did. I would add, and the time, I would rather use that time to do research, to write a book, to study, to 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 put that money to invest in self development. So for so self development is a high yielding exercise. And this is low yielding exercise. So what they are doing in those churches is that they are telling people to dress nice, to you know do this, to be high. Those are low yielding. I would rather teach my own people in the embassy of God. See what I teach people in the embassy of God. Discover who you are. Yeah. Use that effort, that energy to discover who you are. That money that you are using to dress up, go and use it to start your own ministry, to you know do your own NGO, to go and better end other people's lives. So, can you see the difference? Low yielding and high yielding lifestyle. So, those things that they are packaging, they are packaging low yielding. But it will give you appearance. It will give you appearance of looking cool, looking sharp. But then you are going to have outward appearance, but in that content is zero. So, I would rather teach our people to go and study it and spend that time and energy in laboratories, in libraries, so that you'll be able to come out and say, Pastor, I'm coming with a design on how to build our submarine. I would rather have you to come to me with your patent of building or project, uh, project of building a submarine or building a plane or designing a city or an e-city or smart city than coming to me dressed up. That is low yielding. I would rather have you dressed like Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. Yeah. but to design Facebook, mm. than to say you are dressing up like Black Pride. You don't have nothing. <laughs> you are just having shoes. Yeah. 80, 60 percent of all shoes in America are being worn by, are being bought by African Black Americans. Sixty percent of all shoes, and you know they, they are only ten percent of the population. <laughs> 10% of the population buy 60% of all the shoes. But the white people like Zuckerberg, maybe just have three or four, four pairs of shoes. But Bill Gates. But they are controlling the world. This is the difference between low-yielding activities and high-yielding activities. I don't know if you get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, 
the latest one is Vognize uh, it's the Jets. Jet. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 you are so right. You know, somebody came to my pl platform and said, Don't, if you want, criticize any how you want. If you want, criticize Geo, criticize Jet. But me, I'm going to get my own jet. Yeah. I'm going to get, I'm the next one online to get my jet. <laughs> and then the Geo will come and say, Who we, you will get, who, everybody here, I want to get your own jet. Everybody is dreaming of that. Yeah. Personal vanity. Yeah. The new general evangelist for CAC. Him Just an evangelist. Yeah. Why do you need a jet? He said yeah, they went somewhere for a conference. Adeboye was there. Ashimolo was there. Oedeko was there. They all came in their, in their own That's private right. jets. Everybody came Within in their own Nigeria, private jets. So Within Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> And the best one is uh, the Russians won. He has and gone to prize his, his own prize. jet. And he got the prize. The best one is the Russians. So he wants to get it. 22 million. He wants to get it. He's going to buy this year. Ah! And, be, and members will be sacrificing, selling their houses, Everywhere. selling their. Please! They are oh, happy. Yeah, they but, oh, yeah! Yes. Our pastor will also buy his own like, jet. What? Personal vanity. That's what it's called. I mean, can you imagine that that pastor in Abuja that you are talking about, I saw a whole list of, I saw a whole picture, I mean, like 200 pictures somebody put on the, on the internet that the guy had his birthday, maybe he was 40 years old. He took two, if he got a private, a jet, a big, they hire a plane, commercial jet, and took 200, flew 200 members or people from the church, 200 people, from Nigeria, first class, everybody or plane, they put, they hired plane to take them to Dubai just to uh, commemorate uh, the birthday. Uh, from Nigeria to commemorate in Dubai, what happened? Are you all not coming from Nigeria? <laughs> Why can't you do commemorate it in Nigeria? To Dubai and back back to Nigeria to come back home <laughs> after the birthday for two days. <laughs> And they are not the only ones doing that. These are not just pastors. These are musicians doing that. These are all about doing that kind of crazy stuff. Personal vanity has become a culture in our country. Personal vanity has become a culture. There's a new style of burial where people are now burying their people with cars. Brand new with car. Cars. Yes, yes. Brand new Jeep. Have you shared, I have keep you, seeing that video coming. Yeah. I saw it, yeah. So they will buy a Jeep, mm -hmm. sit you there as a, they'll put your, you there as a, so bury yes, the Jeep. Bury the Jeep. So the Brand Jeep new. Big yes. enough, yeah. And they'll they put the yeah, Jeep yeah, in yes. there. When there yes. are people that need all the... Mercedes-Benz, BMW, put you in the casket and put you in the car. And bury the car together with you. <laughs> It's called personal vanity. That's what they know. The lowest form of yeah, base is basement of life. The lowest form of uh, low yielding activities. The low low level life lifestyle. Anyway, let's go back. So that's why I'm talking about worldviews. Are you now getting it? We need to put our worldviews right. We need to correct our value systems. So naturally, these people, these Africans are naturally courageous and naturally cautious and polite. But that being cautious and polite is not that it's naturally. That is what the tissue from when you are young is from childhood is there. Full of personal vanity and is full of it. All of us are like that. And, you know, all of us, you know, we have to work on ourselves with little sense of veracity. Now, what is that? Lit veracity, I think, is the ability to believe. Uh, yeah? Truth. Yeah. It's accuracy. Yeah, accuracy. Factual. Beautiful. It's more than truth. It's factual. So what that means is that with little sense of veracity means these people are not concerned about the factuality 
about details, about the fact of the matter. They are not basing their action on facts or on research. They are not basing their... Oh, let's, let's check that out. Let's check that out. I'm going to go to the, uh, to the, to the dictionary again. Veracity. Okay, let's say veracity. So veracity means truthfulness, accu accuracy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They don't care about accuracy. Accuracy, precision, no, nothing like precision in our culture. Or uh, exact, you know, authenticity, fidelity, fact, decency. They don't care about facts, based on facts. Oh, conformity to facts and accuracy. Yeah, that is it. Conformity to facts and accuracy. So we don't, we don't, Nigerians don't act by fact. We don't, we don't, we don't even, facts don't matter to us. It's emotion that matters. This is so correct. You remember all those Boko Haram something? It's not about facts. People want to know. Okay, for example, people are calling me, Pastor Sunday, why have you not spoken? Why have you not something? But this is true. Now this has happened. They don't want statistics. They don't, they don't understand me. That I want to first of all sit down, get my facts together, do an argument, right? And then um, I must, uh, there must be a goal. Cause and effect. There must be a reason why I want to research. There must be a result that must come out of it. I shouldn't just respond. I shouldn't just say, okay, I'm going to give a speech. Yes, they killed people, so I'm going to just talk. There must, that is a cause. If I'm going to talk, then I must know and anticipate and know exactly what effect that is going to give. What result? I must, but our people is just emotion. You just say something. You must say something. You, <laughs> why are you not saying something now? Uh -uh, you see that's happened. I know. But I don't just act like that. Do you people notice the way I, the way I preach? Make you feel the thing off now. Do you people know the way I preach? Even when I was talking about these Nigerian people, I come with evidences, empirical evidences. I come with undeniable proofs and facts. We don't act based on proofs and facts. With accuracy and, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, you know, facts and factual based information. We don't, no veracity. Or is it that? Veracity. No veracity. No veracity. It's we, 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 in fact, some people came to me and say, why are you always using statistics? Why are you always using statistics? Because there's no veracity. We, don't, we are not a culture of veracity, we are a culture of sentiment. It is either veracity or sentiment. But even though those, do you know that even people who saw the video where Adeboy, Pastor Adeboy was saying, and you know, if you don't pay your tithe, you will not go to heaven. Even they will say, I said, did you see the video? I said, yeah. I said, but yeah, it doesn't matter, but is it not, Adeboy, is it not a senior person? I said, ah, okay, so it's not, so salvation now is not because of Jesus. Eh, but is you know you must know who said it now. I, ah! <laughs> so I was thinking that if I could get the veracity, well, <laughs> but you saw the fact now. He said, yeah, but you know it is a ah! <laughs> I don't know if you get it. Eh? So it is not about the truth. Truth doesn't matter in our culture. Truth doesn't matter. It's about who said it, how respectful he is. Or how rich he is. Okay, for example, another one said, uh, okay, no, let's say, no, it didn't, let's say, Adep or he slapped the poor girl. I said, ah, do you see him slap the girl? He said, yeah, I saw the video, but, uh, but do you know, do you know what was feeling that time? Ah, ah. I said, hey, wait a minute. Ah, ah. Is it about, <laughs> it is not about the fact. It is not, but it's your neighbor who said it now, but it's a man of God. Ah, no, but, it, <laughs> but the young you said that the guy is a witch. I, I said, okay, is it right to slap again, church? Yeah. Then, well, is it not a man of God? Ah, wait. 
Because we are sentiment people. Truth doesn't matter to us. Okay, for example, somebody, I was telling someone that in the Acts of the Apostles and in the New Testament, there was no tithe collecting of tithe. And even when they collected offering, they use it to take care of people. This way came and said, no, it's working for me. Ah, no, but the word of God said this. Can you see? And can you find the Bible? You cannot say, yeah, but it's working for ah, what of, Can you see the fact that they were using it to give to other people? You know, well, it's working for <laughs> So it is, it is what do you call it? Sentiment, emotion, anything but fact, but veracity. This was written 200 years ago. That is why, if I could do something for Nigeria, if I could, be, if I would have authority over the whole country, like a government or president, this this is going to be my number one. Emphasis because if you change the inner content of a people, yeah, the society will automatically change all those infrastructure they are all talking about is there for sheep popularity and sheep gain. These are the things we should be focusing on. Now, the, uh, success. Do you now believe that we have to write a book on this thing? But this is one of the greatest gifts, benefit that we could ever give to that country. Okay, next point. With little sense of veracity, fond of music. That's what I don't need to say anything. <laughs> fond of music and loving weapons as an oriental love. You know, the only thing that has been corrected over the, few, over the two, last 200 years is the weapon one. Or has it not been corrected? It is no more. Okay, it's been converted into another thing, right? Love for power, beautiful. Because, uh, yeah, it's very well observed, very well observed. Love for power. Nigerians are crazy about that. They are crazy about power. It, it, because, because weapon is a, is a form of power. They still use weapon too. Eh. I know, the, I know, yeah, sham also is weapon. Because weapon is not just like physical weapon, it's also weapon of amulet, uh, power, but it's all the whole idea of power, of control. Right? Yeah, the reason I said that still is weapon, in any common fight between two people in the okay. street of Lagos, right, you see them, they always take up weapon, break bottle, knife. Even in that thing, in that place now, yeah. in the APC, yeah. they, they are, yeah. yeah. Then when you see like factions like OPC fighting against, you see people instead killed, of the yeah. power of weapon of argument and truth, yeah. weapon. Physical, physical weapon, weapon. or juju weapon or power. Yeah, it's hmm. those are the top that look for power. Too. And we need to correct these things. His thoughts are concentrated on the events and feelings of the moment. Did you hear that? Is his thoughts are concentrated on the events and feelings of the moment. Is that not Nigeria for you? Huh? It's very spot on. Everybody just wants to enjoy the moment. And that is why they just forget. They get carried away and they score them back. <laughs> the th his thoughts are concentrated on the events and feelings of the moment. And it suffers. You know, I was listening to somebody, a, a, a coach. Even though, for those of you who are lovers of football, even though I want, I had a premonition, and I want to believe that Nigeria will get to semifinals this year, but I just feel like that. I just, I don't know why, but I, that's the premonition I have. But I respect, I, I, I agree with this. Past, there is a coach they were interviewing that who are the African teams that are po possibly uh, going to do better. So I have you, Ah, okay. So who are the Africans that are supposed to, that might most likely do better? Norman, I heard you, bro. Who are the uh, Nigerians that might possibly do, I mean, who are the Africans in the, in the football something that could do better? Or who, who could get to semi-finals? So this person said, maybe Egypt, or maybe Senegal, Senegal. But, so somebody was saying, what about Nigerians? They are the first one to qualify. They, you know, they are doing good. He said Nigerians, forget about them. 
He said, because Nigerians are too confident. They are too full of themselves. They are just too full of themselves. They are just, they are too excited. If they are doing good, that is their biggest problem. Because they will be carried away by that, by that success. If they have, so when the Nigerians began to lose, at the friendly, they had some friendly, I was just rejoicing that they were losing. Because I knew personally in myself that that man was right. That man was a German man and who came to Africa. He's a coach. He's coached in many countries in Africa. And he said, the problem of Nigeria is that when it begins to go for them, they begin to think that they are better than the rest of the world, that everybody is inferior to them, that they will win. But for you to win the World Cup, you need to be cool-headed. You need to be withdrawn from your own personal success so that you'll be able to see clarity in the... Because when you have that you know, excitement too much, he said that is the problem with Nigeria. They, they believe too much in themselves. They, if they win one game and begin to say, no, we are better than everybody else. And that is exactly what is. They are full of themselves. It's, their thoughts are concentrated on the events and feelings of the moment. They are thinking they are just winning. They, are, they don't know that the opponents, they are going to prepare to study you, your strategies, and to make you fail. But they are just excited. They are believing their infallibility. And that's the biggest problem of Nigeria. And it suffers little from the apprehension for the future. See, no foresight. It's the same thing we are saying. So he doesn't care. He's, he cares less about the about You know, like in Europe, everybody is always concerned about, you know, the future, something. It, that's what is supposed. But in Nigeria, he just wants to enjoy the moment. Just want to enjoy now. That's why they are spreading the money like that. They don't care about the environment, about building the, you know, the weather comes. No, it's just about the, no apprehension about the future. Or grief for the past. <laughs> it's just about what's going on now. That's animalistic. Now, precious. Is it precious? Pre you are, I got it right this time. Okay, precious. I want to hear from you because you have been quiet. But I really want to, I, I, and I feel you having a lot of emotions with this topic that we are discussing. I don't really, I can't quite pick it. Either you are thinking that uh, you are sad about what you are discovering about your people, or rather maybe you are rather sad that we are saying so negative about Nigeria, or you are thinking that, you know, we are not as bad, just like uh, Tokpa is thinking. Or what, what is going on? I want to hear your emotions out. I think all that has been said here is really true, and there is need for change. Because looking at the way things are going, it's people are, are not seeing, like they're not, they don't have foresight. They're just, you know, blinded by what is happening surrounding them, and they they're easily moved, like stimulated by, you know, excitement and money and things like that, which is vanity. It's vanity upon vanity. When Solomon, the richest man in in, in the Bible the, or in the world that ever lived. He, at the end of when he was about to die, he said, this world, everything is vanity upon vanity. So what's the essence of us doing all these things, you know, and why well, we that can is change the, that our explains world. why That explains why our politicians will go to power, a place of power, and they're only concerned about making themselves feel good. It's vanity, the, the excitement of the moment. You know, they, they, want to, they don't care what will happen. The country will not have electricity. They will not have water. No, that doesn't concern them. They are more concerned about the excitement of the hour, about the moment that right now. That, that's why they will steal right now and don't care what happens to them. That's why there is no development. You know, why is it that we'll be having the, all this oil money and everybody? It's because of that particular thing we are talking about. His thoughts are concentrated on the events and feeling of the moment. Can you imagine it that the, our Senate, our Senate right now, they are having, all, they are making like a, mil, a million dollars a year or so. Yeah, something, they are make a lot of money a month, right? 30 million a month. 13 million every month. And where the, like a country where there is no, two, they are living on less than two dollars. Why? Because to them, as long as, is, as they are concentrated on the enjoyment and the pleasure <laughs> At the events of the moment, that is what matters to them. So that's why there is corruption because they are not; their life is not based on questioning, reasoning, 
or cause and effect. That there is a reason if I do this now, if I don't build that road, if I don't do, there is an effect that because they don't, we have not been, a whole, our whole culture have not been taught to reason, to always see consequences. We only want to see what we are enjoying right now. We have not, the whole culture have not been taught to question my motives, why I'm doing this, what, what is the purpose of this, no cause and effect, no questioning, no reasoning. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so even if they do all the things, it's just for me, myself, and my family. Yeah. When they gather all this money, and they don't think about the community, there's lack of love yeah. as well when you look at it, because yeah. if you have love, you would, you know, you won't, you won't squander the money that is meant to improve the society. You would, you know, share it out and. You but know, there is personal jobs, vanity. Great, yes. Why personal should I vanity. think about society when there is personal vanity? Yeah. I want to glory, personal glory. Yeah. I need to create objects to make me glory. I want to create platform to make me enjoy my vanity. Yeah, give it to Ikeshi. I think you want to say. Uh, you know what you were saying about uh, what you were saying about personal vanity and stuff like that, and it's uh, it's on top of each other. And you were saying about um, how pastors like man, like man of God are always like trying like someone would be like, oh, the man of God said this or this that and the other. You know what I'm saying? I think it goes down to rhetoric when you're talking about reasoning mm. because there's this thing that humans do not, no matter what you say, you can tell them straight right now this is bad for you. They will not listen to you. Yeah. You don't know blah 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 blah. But I think what it goes is, it's like it talks about you need to. I think what people should know, especially, is like you should talk, use, understand the emotion, have a certain sense of um, understanding of what people are going through in order to place reason and logic into their heart. Because Beautiful. The ability for you to see what other people are experiencing, mm -hmm. that is empathy, right? Empathy. And like, for example, you say for. Um, your uh, like your politicians themselves, if they only care for themselves, mm. they don't have the same. They're not walking in the same shoes of the village person who mm. was living. That like God knows how far. Like the roads, even you're talking about infrastructure. They're not even connecting roads to those yeah. people. They mm. don't have any connections to the smallest type yeah. of life. So for them to for the world to technically improve, not just only Nigeria, but for the world to improve, they need to have a certain sense of understanding what life is for the All simplest person, mm. for the simplest, rather than for where you came from. Like my for example, my story could be like. I was born in a, I was born in a very like wealth, not wealthy, but like an okay family. You know, I wasn't, I didn't suffer, but I still need to remember that there are people out there that are, that are, that are, you know, they they, they struggle to even, you know, have. Shoes but Nigerians don't even think about you know, that. They only care about their about own, themselves, their about children. their own personal vanity. You see, and it's more about it's trying to also like also if if you're at a position in your life where you are doing okay, it's also about trying to lend your own hand to other people to stand up. It's more about rising people, like communities as well. You to try and like bring up people as well. Love, what you were talking love, about. Justice, it's just got a love for the people, you know what I mean? And that is all connected to cause and effect and questioning. Yeah, and even if the lowest people, like the poor people, once they get elevated, sometimes, and they pre get pre money. Precious, yeah? Yeah. I think now you are thanking my yoga. You are thanking my yoga, I guess. <laughs> or you've not started thanking her yet. <laughs> <laughs> she won't have been here if not for my yoga. <laughs> yeah. So even if they get elevated and they become rich, they, they forget about their little beginnings. And just focus oh, on their themselves. own little yes. beginnings. Mm. They easily forget and, you know, just Because want to enjoy it's at the life, moment, they the concentrate life, yeah. on the events and feelings. feelings. Of the moment because the most important thing is feelings biomasses biomass lives by feelings you know instincts stimulations and uh, uh, uh yeah so feelings feelings of the moment feelings shoes feelings of the moment so yeah so this is why you people now understand why i have to that's no problem this is why you people understand why I've got to start this whole thing with word view. Word view, because this is what has formed all this vanity, evil stuff. This is what is now responsible for our word view. This is now, you know, all these things we have talked about and we are still going to talk about, they are now responsible for African word view, Nigerian word view. This is where we are. This is our word view here. This is what determines how we see life how we think, these, these are all formulated 
and dictated by this animalistic stuff. That is evil. We are next to animals. That is the biggest tragedy. And we are not, nobody is addressing it. Nobody is talking about it. So for us to change our nation, we first of all must change this. This understanding of life, world view that we have. So that we begin to see the world see differently, think differently. That's world view. That's why world view is what I say it must be the beginning of this our Asian team. Because world view will then help us to be able to, to be, you know, to question what, I mean, the a questioning will help us to question our world view. Questioning will help us to change all the, these wrong values. And questioning will help us to be able to build new set of values that will inform and make us to reason and also be, be built on cause and effect. So let's go, go ahead and do you want to read more of what this Lord Lugard had to say about Africans? Or you, don't, you are no more interested? I think we should know it. Okay, uh, continue. Because we, you, now you will know why we have to get all the information we are getting. So he said, the, these Africans, this sort of African, his thought is are concentrated on the events and feelings of the moment. And it suffers little from the apprehension for the future or grief of the past. It's only for the moment. It lives for the moment and, and the feelings of the, the moment. His mind is far nearer to the animal world than that of the European and Asian. And exhibits something of the animal's placid, placid, placidity. That placidity, like the peacefulness, like placidity is like peacefulness, right? Calmness, calmness, peacefulness of the animal. You know when placidity, you know when you have, do you know cat, rats, I mean not cats, cat, the animal, the cat in the house, people have cats, especially, why do they want to have it? Because of the placidity, so they can, they can, you know, they also uh, fodo it, or what they call it, stroke it. They stroke the animal like this because of the placidity, because they are of the animal. They are peaceful, they are cool, they are those domestic animals. <laughs> so let's, anyway, let's. <laughs> so, and exhibit something of the animal's placidity and wants to, de want of desire to rise beyond the state he has reached. Okay. Now, let's, exa let's examine that. So, what he's saying is that the mind of this. Africans is more closer to the Af to the animal world than the European and Asian people. Now I can understand that because that's what I've done in Ukraine here, the, in Ukraine here, and even all over the world. That's what I'm teaching. That's why I wrote the book. Am I a, I'm a person? Am I a personality? The book. I'm a person. Am I a personality? And then there are other books I've written about being out to be in the here and now about. You know, what is another book I read? Uh, okay, where are the heroes? Let the heroes arise. About personality. Because you are either a personality or a biomass. Now, it's, it's a little bit rude that this guy is using the word he's using, like animal, just direct like that. But what I use is biomasses. I'm sure you probably have been hearing me. Biomasses. But biomasses are everywhere. They are, okay, like for example... Talking about biomasses, majority of citizens of any country are biomasses. Europeans also. The Americans, English people, Germans, majority of them, maybe 90% of them, maybe 80% of them are biomasses also, like these animals. What, who are the animals? Who are the biomasses of life? People who live only by emotions, feelings, instincts, stimulations, reflexes. These are the animals of life. So what, that's what he's trying to describe. So don't be annoyed because a lot of Nigerians hate this thing and they hate this guy because he's calling them animals, that they are closer to the animal. But that is the reality. But this is not just about Africans. This is about every other being. You ask these Ukrainians and what I've been teaching them. This is what I've been teaching them. This is what I've taught. I've been able to help them change. And But we, nobody has helped us change these things. And that's why I'm addressing it. We will remain animalistic level of living until somebody addresses this thing. 
So his mind is far nearer to the animal world. And the reason I just told you, because he lives by feelings, by instinct. He doesn't live by, no, by reasoning and questioning. Any, because animals don't live by questioning. Animals don't question. Animals don't reason. Animals don't live by cause and effect. That's the only thing that differentiates us from animals. And you know, I just read in a book. In fact, we have to release that book soon. A mouse or a man or a what do you call it? A, a man or a mouse. I've written the book. You know, this is before this, before I even read this. A man or a mouse. Is, I wrote it in Russian, but I've translated it to English now. A man or a mouse. So I'm going to publish that book soon. So it's not about, huh? It's going to be published soon. They are doing it now. Good. Thank God. A man or a mouse. I've got to read. I wrote that book for Europeans, not even for Nigerians. But this, this is exactly what this man is talking about. Because we are not living by the principle that makes you to be man. So he said that, but our own, <laughs> our own closeness to the animal was too much. More than the Europeans, more than the Asians. And that's because they are more exposed to these principles than us. So if we could be exposed to, we could control it. But right now, nobody is exposing us to this truth. Tell me any pastor, any teacher that is teaching this thing in Nigeria. Or even in the world. So that's why he says, and it be something of the animal's placidity. What does that mean? Carefree. Carelessness. That is like peace. No. You are just too relaxed. Carelessness. What is it in the prediction? What does it say? Placidity. Placidity. It should be peaceful. Unnecessary peace. Unnecessary <laughs> tranquility. Placidity. This English language. <laughs> Placidity. Is it? Pleasantly calm. Hey, hey! That's it. Pleasantly calm and peaceful. For what? Can you imagine? Everybody body is living in poverty. You are just living as if nothing like happens. Can you imagine? Tragedy is happening everywhere. Do you know that a European or American will go to Africa to go to the villages to feed the poor and the people who are... And Africans will be passing him by every day. He will not even see problem. That is the placidity they are talking about. Do you know that in Nigeria, people will be passing by homeless people, children, no, disabled. And why somebody will come from Denmark and be see one child, one alone, that is you know, in the street and becomes a hero. Nigerian Christians even are passing him by every day. Placidity. That is the placidity they are talking about. Somebody will be your neighbor. The student will not go to school. You will be driving Jeep. The road to that your Jeep, to that your school, I mean to that your church is all broken, everything. Placidity, as if nothing happened. Ah, this is Niger. The whole placidity is explaining one word. This is Nigeria now. This one not in Boland, though. This is Nigeria. Ah, this is Nigeria now. That is placidity we are talking about. At this Nigeria, you welcome. You you will you will tire. You will what do I, what they tell you something like that. That you will soon get you, you will soon become like us. Ah, that is the placidity we are talking. Ah, God is in control. Ah, God, uh, something God will do. Is that God? No, it is well. It is well. Yeah, it is well. That's it. That is the placidity. It is well. Ah, ah nothing is well. What is well? People are dying of hunger. People are dying. You know, people are homeless. People are. You say it is well. What well? What is it of the? <laughs> what well? It is not well. But that is the placidity we are talking about. Animalistic placidity. But for animals, it is understandable because animals they don't understand what's going on. They cannot query. They cannot question. But if you are not questioning, you are the same animal. If they cannot, you know, see cause and effect, then you are the same animal if you are not seeing cause and effect. But that, that indifference, that, what, that what's another word I'm looking for? Pl uh, pl complexity or what is it? Complacence. That complacence, uh -huh. that complacence is what placidity is. Complacence. That is what we are having. Okay. 
So exhibit something of the animal's placidity and wants want and lack that is it wants that it lacks lack of desire to rise beyond the state he has <laughs> want means want no want like lack it lacks the desire to want i mean to want to build something why why is it our cities are like that can you imagine that exactly was right nigeria would build a house put his friends and cares less about the sharks that are it doesn't seem desire, but here everybody wants to know our street must be good, the whole city must be good, our whole country must be good, but Nigeria don't care about that. As long as he has his own minimum comfort, my own house has electricity, that's what bothers me. My own house has water, that's what bothers me. That is the placidity we are talking about. My own house, my own family children are, are, are able to have education. I'm able to send my own children abroad, that's what bothers me. So, that is, uh, he doesn't want, he doesn't show any desire to want to rise beyond the state he has reached. We, he, he reaches a, a state of comfort for himself, and that's what he relaxes. Through the ages, the African appears to have evolved no organized religious creed. And though, so, that means paganism, that's what, you know. And though some tribes appear to believe in a deity, the religious sense seldom rises above, seldom, that is rarely, rarely rises above pantheistic animalism. Pantheistic, anima, pantheistic means, mult, you know, just believing in stones and believing in multiple God, in anything. Yeah, multiple, you know, like believing in sun or thunder or uh, iron or, that is just believing in anything. So which is animalism? Because it is like, anim you know, it is, and animals will be enticed by anything. Mm. So no supreme God knowledge. And it's still the same thing. If you tell them that coconut will give you miracle, <laughs> they will bring coconut. If you tell them that it is money you need to bring, it is dance you need to do, it is still the same thing. Even though there is Christianity, but we still don't understand God. No knowledge of God. That is still the same thing. This was before Christianity came. But now that Christianity has come, it's still the same thing. We will follow anything just to get a miracle. Because the whole essence of us going to God is to get something for ourselves. It's not to discover God. So no knowledge of God. That's basically what he's saying. And their religiosity, their pantheistic animalism seems more often to take the form of a vague dread of the supernatural. Yes. Is that dread still not there? Oh, your family, your grand, grand, uh, grandfather's house, they buried something there. Uh, generational cause. Uh, you need to then get deliverance. You need to break the cause. You need to do this. Even your Jesus has died though. He has broken the cause. He has finished. He has finished. But they are still telling you dread of the supernatural. It's still there. Oh, somebody will curse you. Oh, you will do this. Oh, this will happen. It's still the same to 200 years later. As if Christianity has not come. That's what superstition can do for people. I mean, paganism and syncretism. It lacks the power of organization. Everybody knows that. No organization. And these are the things we are supposed to be, our education is supposed to be paying attention to. Organization, management, uh, maintenance, structure, systems. These are things, what Africans like, when I came to Europe, it's when I discovered that I didn't know what it means to, you know, to be organized, to have system, organization, structure. I had to teach myself. I had to learn it. Because I discovered that uh, Europeans were better than me like that. I said, no, I'm going to be better than all of them. And thank God I'm now teaching them. So it lacks the power of organization. And we need to teach our whole country to become like this. And it's conspicuously deficient in the management and control alike of men and business. So no management. You cannot control people. You cannot manage people. Not con you can control but not manage. No management of people or business. Even go and see the, most, the biggest businesses in Nigeria, even uh, Dangote, they are being controlled by foreigners, maybe by Indians or you know, people like that. No managemental skills. These are the kind of things they are supposed to be teaching for primary school. We don't like details. He loves the display of power. Oh, that's what we spoke about earlier. He loves the display of power, but fails to realize his responsibility. <laughs> 
Is that not why our government yeah. we're having problems? Head of state. Yeah. yeah, president. You know, they like the power, but yeah. no responsibility. Yeah. They have been there for years. Yeah. Nothing changes. The same with pastors. They like the power, the opulence of the power, but the responsibility doesn't deliver anything. He will work hard with a less, this is another one. He will work hard with a less incentive than most races. Yeah, that's because he's not able to assess his, uh, his uh, value. He doesn't have, you know, of his work. You know, a Nigerian can work hard, but he doesn't even know because, the, but he has to do all that motivation or all that stimulation, so what they have to push him to do. But with less incentive than most people. So he will not be paid for it as much, but at least he'll say, at least I'm getting something to send back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, oh, I would rather work for two, uh, $10 an hour or whatever, uh, $10 or eight hours than not doing, than, you know, Proper, yeah, because they will not have papers, they will not have documents. They just want to have something little to send home. Yeah, at least I have something. He has the courage of the fighting animal, <laughs> and Nigerians have that. Especially, you know, the courage of the fighting animal, an instinct, but it's an instinct rather than a moral virtue. So you see, like, he's courageous, but it's, why is, what is the difference between instinct and moral virtue? The questioning and thinking. The thinking and questioning. You know, it's not thinking true. It's both his courageousness. That's what qualifies it as an animal. And instinct. In brief, the virtues and def defects of this race type are those of attractive children. You know, children don't think. You know, a, ch a child, your one year or two year old child will not come to you and say, Mommy, have you done your breakfast? What will you eat in the evening? The child doesn't even know there is evening coming until it comes. The only thing the child knows is that, Mama, eat, eat, eat. I'm hungry. Why? Because it's only now what is paining him right now. So he said like they are like children. And most of the time we are like that. Whose confidence when it is won is given ungrudgingly. You know, when they trust, they just... You know, you can have them. You can dominate them. You can do anything you want with them. They give up to you on grudgingly. As to an older and wiser superior without, and without envy. They just, re, they, that's why they have began to, that, because he's an Oibo man, he knows that once you win them over, they give up to you on grudgingly and begin to see you as a wiser and older without envy, without questioning. That's why they are calling Oibo. Even people started calling themselves uh, Ogunto Yibo, Fato Ifato Yibo, or something. Because you are Oyibo, you are like a god. Or Oluwato Yibo. <laughs> they submit to you that, okay, the god also is up to the white man. <laughs> you know, that he knows what he's talking about. That is, you know, you know, that is also because of not questioning. That if the man can do it, if the white man can do it, anybody can do it too. We don't question. No cause and effect. Perhaps the two traits which have impressed me as those most characteristics of the African native are his lack of apprehension, he doesn't care for what happens, and his ability to visualize the future. You see? It's the carefree life. Just living for today. So this is why I, this is from Page 70 of the dual mandate by Frederick Lord Lugard. Lord Frederick Lugard. He wrote it in 1926. So this is why I decided to start this our whatever our HMT with the, the art of questioning with word view. Why we have to question? Why we have to question the way we are? Why we have to question who we are right now? That is why I wrote that book. I'm a person. Am I a personality? Let the heroes arise. Where are the heroes? Which was the third one I, I mentioned? The, a, a mouse and a, a man or a mouse have not published that. Uh, there's another one I've published already. 
to let the heroes arise. I'm a man, am I a personality? Uh, yeah, even if you get those other those books, they are enough to help you get out of this problem. Okay, so this is the introduction to the topic, Understanding Worldviews.